Now just so I've got something to work with and to make this easier to line up and because I don't need the full length of our studio recording I'm going to left click at the end and drag to the left to trim away the excess we don't need just for this short event. And I'm going to do the same at the beginning as well. I'll left click and drag to the right. I'm probably going to readjust this back in a few seconds time. Just bear with me for the moment. Okay, and I'm trimming away so that I leave a short section there where I can see my marker has been added. Maybe at this screen resolution it is quite difficult to tell, but trust me it is there. So now all I need to do is line this up so I'll left click, drag it to the left, and I'm lining it up with the overall marker spread right across all tracks there. Let me click on here a few times to zoom in to make this more easy. Okay, now if I left click once more on my studio recording and drag to the left so that I can line up visually both markers. So there we go, pretty much dead on. Remembering, of course, that even if I wasn't exactly precise with adding the marker to my studio recording, I can adjust this by ear, shall we say, rather than by sight, simply by listening back to this studio recording and matching it up with the visuals. And in fact, I'll just zoom in a little bit more, and there you can see, if I just move my audio to the right there, there you'll see, admittedly, not very easily, but there you'll see the marker for my studio recording. Let me drag it back so that it lines up. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'll click on here to mute the playback of our rehearsal room audio, which means that when I play this back in a second, we're going to see the actual video, but without its embedded audio, and now with the studio recording replacing it. I'll click here a few times to zoom out, and I've done that so I can left click on here once more and drag this right to the beginning. Thus, the audio playback of this studio recording now matches the length of our video clip. Well, it will do in a second when I extend it so that it covers the end as well. I'll do that in a second. Let's just try this out. I'll hit play. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, fairly close. Now what I'm trying to do is keep my eye on something visual that the band do. So actually I'm keeping my eye on the drummer so that when I see him hit a particular drum, a tom or a snare or a cymbal, for example, I can then minor adjust the position of my studio recording just in case I'd not got that marker that I inserted in the right position. And therefore now you can match the audio much more closely by doing something like that. Anyway, once you are satisfied, then do extend the audio from the end there so that it matches the entire length of our video clip. Okay, done. And that's it. That's all we need to do. It seems complicated, but is in fact a very simple process. Let's have one more look through this, just to check it through. 